Gauge plots or speedometer plots, as they're also often called, are great ways to visualize progress or parts of a whole. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create such a plot in ggplot. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's dive into our studio. In this Quarto document, I have already put in a code chunk that loads the tidyverse and comes up with some fake data set that shows us how much of work we have already done, how much we have already completed. With this data set here, we want to create this plot. And the way to do that will be to use the ggforce package because this package allows you to use the function gmargbar. Basically, what this layer does is that it creates bar charts that wrap around a circle. You see, you can think of this image here as this white part over the 95% comp complete label as half of a circle and this bar wrapping around it. Actually, I have an image here. Here in black, there's the circle and the bar wraps around the circle. Now, what you need to use GMArcBar is to tell it the start and end points of the corresponding bars. Here, we need to have two start and end points. First, for the green bar, we need start points and an end point. And then the end point of the green bar is the start point of the next bar of the gray one. And then we need an end point here. And the way to compute these end points is via angles. Basically, you have to think of a circle as 360 degrees and zero degrees being at the line of this red arrow and 180 degrees being at the other red arrow. So it goes from zero to 180 degrees and then all the way around to 360 degrees. So this way you have to compute these angles using the percentages that you have inside of your data set. And the thing becomes a little bit different because while I have just explained the circle using 360 degrees, GM ArcBar uses a different unit, namely radians, and in that unit everything is expressed in pi. So the full circle isn't 360 degrees, but 2 pi in this unit. It's the exact same thing, just a different unit. Feels weird thinking about it when you first encounter this, but this is a very common thing to do to express angles in pi. And in that setting, we have 180 degrees as pi and 360 degrees is 2 pi. So now that we have that figured out, we can use our percentages here to multiply them by 2 pi. But since we only want to work with a half circle here, we will multiply them not by 2 pi, but just by pi. So let's start out by computing the start column, multiplying the percentage by pi. Let me just minimize this here so that we can focus on the percentages. But now notice that the start of one bar isn't the start of the other. That's what I've just said earlier, right? And this is what we need to create the bar. So really the first bar needs to start at zero and the other bar needs to start at the percentage of this one here times pi. And this is what gives us this value. So that's why we replace percentage with the lag functions which shifts the vector and the one that cannot be shifted is set to default of zero. And that way we get exactly what we need. And now we can compute the end column as the start plus the percentage times pi. And now if we look at the data, we see that the first bar starts at angle zero, goes all the way to 2.98, and the next bar starts at that exact value and then goes all the way to 3.14, which is pi. So let's call this data set fake that. And with that, we have already done most of the heavy lifting. Most of the hard math part is done now. Now that we have this fake data set, let us create a new code chunk. And in there, we use this fake data set and pass it to ggplot and then add a gm arc bar layer on top of this. And this layer comes from the ggforce package. And this one will require a couple of aesthetics, of course. As I've said, gm arc bar creates bars that wrap around the circle. So this is how they become curved. The bar is simply wrapped around the circle. And therefore we need to specify the center of the circle. And we do that via the x0 and y0 coordinate. It doesn't really matter for our chart which coordinates you use here, but the point is you need some. So let's just set these to one. The reason why the coordinates don't matter is because the coordinate system will simply adjust if you move around the circle. Then we need to map the fill aesthetic to the part, so to this column here, so that we have different colors for the complete and incomplete part. And then we need to specify the start and end angles that we have just computed. So these parts were kind of easy to understand. But now what we need additionally are two radiuses. In this case, R0 and R1. Let me just show you the result of this and then I will explain what they do. 
Notice how we get a shard here, but it looks like curved bars, but it doesn't really look like a circle. And the reason for that is because we need to make sure that we use the same aspect ratio on the X and Y axis. So this is why we use coord fixed. And that way we have a circle. Now, as promised, let me explain what these two radii mean. Basically, this bar that you have here is the result of intersecting two circles. If you see this plot here, then you can see that the bars that we have that are wrapped around the black circle, you can think of them as the blue larger circle where we take out the black circle here. And so we can modify the width of the bars that we get by changing the radiuses of the larger circle and the smaller circle. And this is exactly what these two radii do. Funny thing, I think I have said radiuses all the time. I'm actually not sure if it's a radii or radiuses, whatever, you know, it's two, two times the radius. That's what we need. So if I put 0.5 here, you can see that the bar gets wider now. And if I put this to 0.9, then you can see that the bar gets narrower. So it all depends on the difference between these two radii. So let's put this to 0.75 just like before. And hopefully by now it is clear how we manage to create these curved bars now. Now the next thing we need to take care of is the orientation of this bar. Basically, we can turn this around by turning the angles by a constant. So let's just subtract the quarter of a circle from the start and end coordinates. So let's subtract minus pi halves. And we do that with the end coordinates too. And then we have flipped everything around. Nice. Now we have basically the hard work done. Now it becomes time to apply a custom annotation and then apply a bit of theming. So what we do here first is to add an annotate layer where we want to add a text annotation so that we can say 95% complete here. And since we want to place the label directly in the middle here, we will put it at the coordinates 1, 1. So let's put this to 1, 1. And then we put in the label that we want, which we actually generate via the glue function. We put this in here, we will get the label 95% complete. I just multiplied the percentage done that we have here, this variable times 100, and then I added percent complete to this. So this part is added to it, the 95 here, this one is computed. And now if I throw this in there, I get the label there, but it's not that pretty, so let's format it. We first increase the size and then change the font family. We also make it bold and then we make it green because I feel like green represents completeness. And now we need to work on the alignment. We need to make sure that this text is bottom aligned. So we make sure that V just is zero. And with that, we have a nice label in there. We just have to make sure that we remove all of the other things like the grid lines and so on. And also make sure that the colors that we use inside of the bars match this green color that we have used inside of the label. Also, we can add the title and subtitle that we've seen in the first image in this video. So let's add the title and the subtitle. Now to get rid of all the grid stuff here, let us use theme void. And then we can apply a theme. And the first thing we should do is to get rid of the legend. Finally, we should do a bit of text styling here for the title and the subtitle. So let's work on the title first, where we change the font family, we increase the size and we make it bold. And for the subtitle, we do a similar thing. We just use a different font size and do not make it bold. And finally, we can make sure that we use the correct colors inside of the bars. We do that by using a scale fill manual layer. Via that layer, we can modify the colors that are mapped to the fill aesthetic. So this means we can modify the values and set it to a vector where the vector is named using the thing that are inside of the data set. So inside of the data set, you find part and this column is also the one that is mapped to the fill aesthetic. So you have to specify colors for the complete and incomplete. And here we specify this green color for complete and this gray 80 color for incomplete. And if we do that, we have the correct color inside of our chart. Perfect. And with that, we have completed our plot here. And as always, you can find all of the code that I have shown you in this video in the blog post that corresponds to this video. And you will find the link to that via the description of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And with that said, have a nice day and see you next time.